register now. What's happening people? How are you guys doing? Welcome to today's session. I hope that all of you guys are doing good and taking care of yourself and I hope that you know your life is going good without any sort of problem. So people this here is going to be uh, session number one of Spectrum cha chapter. This is again for SICC 10 student and today we'll be talking about deviation through a prism. That is what is the topic for today. Now before we get started uh, my, uh, my health is not so great guys i have a very bad throat infection so if in case my energy seems a little too low i'm really very sorry about it but hopefully by the next session i'll be back to normal so pray for that fingers crossed anyways so today guys we'll be starting off with this chapter the, this chapter and this topic for today that is deviation produced by a triangular prism and before we get started as always a small pinch of positivity the goal for today is this guys start by doing what is necessary then do what's possible and suddenly you're doing the impossible it's not that people who do uh, great impossible tasks are doing it in one day guys they take years and years of dedication it takes years and years of practice and you know a lot of failures and that is what makes them do the impossible it does not mean that only they are capable of doing it you are equally capable of doing it everyone has two hands everyone has two legs everyone has two eyes we are all blessed with the same it's all about doing what we can from our side doing what the best whatever is the best ability that you have give your best shot at it and trust me guys one day people will be talking about you having you know achieved something that once thought was impossible all right with that simple quote let's get started with today's session so these are the topics that we'll be covering in the sessions ahead today we'll be talking about deviation produced by a triangular prism then we'll talk about deviation through a prism then electromagnetic spectrum and properties are, are, and uses of uh, different radiations of electromagnetic spectrum as well that is your x-rays and uv rays and everything we'll be talking about all of those as well so with that said guys let us get into this topic now in the past we have already seen that light when it's traveling from one medium to the other Reflex, like over here, when light is traveling from air into glass, a prism is, uh, you know, a, a, a structure, an object which is made up of glass. It's a transparent object which is made up of glass. And when it's moving from one medium to another, there's obviously refraction happening. The thing about the refraction is that once the ray of light refracts, it will also come out of the prism as well, which is what is called as the emergent ray. So this ray of light that is coming and incidenting or coming and hitting the surface is called as the incident ray. And the one, the ray of light which leaves or exits the prism is called as the emergent ray. Now the thing is this people, in, your, in a prism, you see that the ray of light after refraction or the emergent ray in other words, is not gonna be parallel to the incident ray. Now, unlike your glass lab, remember in a glass lab, I told you that uh, when the ray of light is refracting, the emergent ray is going to be parallel to the principal axis, sorry, the, uh, the uh, incident ray, but here that is not the case. It's not going to be parallel to each other, but there is some sort of deviation that is happening in the path of light. And that deviation generally in a prism is always towards the base of the prism. So if you look at the solar system, it's moving towards the base. It should have, it could have gone far, you know, it could have gone away in the opposite direction, but no, it always moves towards the base. Even the emergent ray as well is moving towards the base itself. Now, the deviation produced by a triangular prism. Let's understand what type of deviation or what sort of deviation can you see in a triangular prism. Like I told you guys. So there's some sort of deviation happening. Now this deviation can be measured by understanding something called as the angle of deviation. So what is angle of deviation? Now this is the incident ray. Now what happens after refraction the ray of light passes like this. Now if I were to extend this incident ray a straight line that is uh, you know that that where the incident ray, the ray of light was supposed to go and this here is the emergent ray and if I draw a straight line where the ray of light was supposed to be what happens is that there is an angle formed between the incident ray and the emergent ray that angle that is formed between the incident ray and the emergent ray 
that angle is what is called an angle of deviation now let me just show you one thing guys this here is the actual path of the light this is the actual path of the light but then what we are doing what we are doing is we are basically extending the emergent ray and the incident ray and wherever they coincide the angle that is formed over there that is called as the the angle of emerge or the angle of deviation now there is two deviations happening one deviation is happening over here where the incident ray first refracts which is denoted as delta 1 so refract this uh, the angle of deviation is generally represented as delta this is what is delta and here the, you can call it as delta 1 that is the first time the ray of light is actually deviating from its original path that is called as the first angle of deviation which is represented as delta 1 first deviation now again over here it's again deviating isn't it when it's emerging out also it's actually deviating so here also you see that there is another kind of you know deviation happening the ray of light was supposed to pass straight but then no this is what happened so there's an angle formed again over there between the normal and the uh, emergent ray which is called as the second angle of deviation now the thing is this guys this angle of deviation depends on two factors one is the angle of incidence obviously if you talk about the first uh, angle of deviation it depends on the angle of incidence and secondly it also represents it depends on the refractive index of both glass with respect to air so here glass with what is the refractive index of that is your you know uh, the relative refractive index of glass with respect to air is also an important factor in deciding how much is that ray of light going to deviate the same goes with uh, your second angle of deviation as well your second angle of deviation also does the same thing the it depends on basically the emergent angle or the angle of incidence on this particular surface you can call it that and also the refractive index of air with respect to glass the refractive index of air with respect to glass is also an important factor to decide what is the second angle of deviation so this here is the first angle of deviation and this here is the second angle of deviation now again this here is basically the angle formed between the actual ray of light this is the actual ray of light and this was supposed to be the ray of light that is the incident ray and here this was supposed to be the ray the the ray of light was supposed to pass straight but then what happened is that there is some sort of deviation happening and you know the ray of light is coming out um, uh, deviated from its original path which is what is called as a emergent ray now here's the thing guys if you add up deviation the angle of deviation number one and angle of deviation number two you get what is this angle of remember to understand this a little better guys remember this this is one of the properties of triangle i don't know if you guys remember it that the sum of two uh you know angles the the, the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of two opposite interior angles it's pretty much exactly the same so here if this is uh, this is delta 2 then this would also be basically delta 2 because it's, the, it's in the opposite side so this this whole angle will also be delta 2 so if you find that uh, you know if you just uh, add them both up you will get out what whatever is the exterior angle which is nothing but delta so the sum of the two interior angles or the sum of two uh, angle of deviation that is angle delta 1 and delta 2 you will get what is delta which is nothing but the angle of deviation so this angle plus this angle which is which is nothing but this angle if you add them both up you will get what is the total angle of deviation that's all guys now this here is nothing but the first topic of this chapter now what are the factors that it depends on what are the factors that delta depends on or the angle of deviation depends on the first one is the angle of incidence at the first surface the second is the angle of prism that is also an important factor thirdly the refractive index of the material as well and this refractive index of the material is something that is dependent on the wavelength of light so refractive index is something that depends not only on the material itself it also depends on the wavelength of light that is incidenting on the surface as well that is the refractive index depends on the color or the wavelength of light because you know that different colors have different wavelengths so it, it also depends on that as well so dependence on devi deviation in different colors or different wavelengths let's talk about that what do i mean by this here's the thing guys you know that white light is a combination of seven different colors which we know as WebGR, right? WebGR is nothing but the seven colors that is, uh, you know, all of these red, yellow, orange, uh, green, blue, and violet is what you know WebGR in the, uh, like, you know, the order. Now, each light or each wavelength or each colors of light 
have its own wavelength. For example, if you talk about violet, violet's wavelength lies between 424 to 380 nanometer. Blue, on the other hand, 491 to 424. Like that, if you talk about red, it lies between 760 to 647 uh, nanometer. And if you talk about the frequency of light, now the thing is, this guys, uh, the uh, the frequency of red. See, if you look at the number, first of all, wavelength of violet is the least, and the wavelength of red is the highest. In the same, if you talk about the frequency, the wavelength of red is the least, whereas the wavelength of violet is the highest. So frequency is high in wavelength, sorry, in the violet, and the wavelength. Is is less in red the wavelength is high but the frequency is less now we are only bothered about wavelength more than frequency right now so let's talk about the free the wavelength all right so i like i told you red has the highest wavelength of 760 to 647 and here violet is somewhere between 380 to 424 now the thing is this guys as you increase the wavelength of light the refractive index decreases as you increase the wavelength, the refractive index decreases. That means if the wavelength of light is more, then the amount of deviation that is happening or the amount of refraction that is happening, that is going to be less. So what do I mean by that? Red light has the highest frequency, highest wavelength. And because it has the highest wavelength, the refractive index is going to be least for red light that means it deviates the least now remember higher the uh, if you remember the previous sessions we've seen that refractive index is more that means the deviation is going to be more violet on the other hand has the least wavelength and hence it'll have the highest refractive index so if you were to pass white light through it a uh, white visible light maybe uh, maybe a sunlight or something like that, any sort of white light you see that it gets it gets deviated into different it gets divided to so many different colors again because uh you know different uh as light is entering different wavelengths so what happens different wavelengths have uh would get deviated in different ways i told you that each and every light has its own refractive index so they'll de deviate in different way and you see this violet will is the one that gets deviated the most whereas red light is the one that gave, gets deviated the least so this is the actual path this was supposed to be the path of light but because of refraction you see that red light is the one that gets deviated the least and violet is the one that gets deviated the most so uh, the delta v for violet is going to be high delta r for red is going to be much much lower all right now this is super duper important to remember guys now Red light has a wavelength from around 700 to 600 nanometer and violet is around 400 to uh, about 500 nanometer. Now, the, when you talk about white light, white light in total has a wavelength. So the light that you can actually see has a wavelength from 400 to about 700 nanometer. That is basically the wavelength of light that you can see. Anything beyond that is, uh, you know, ultraviolet. Anything below that is called as infrared, which we'll be studying later on. Right? So that pretty much concludes the topic for today. Once again, people, just to quickly revise you through what we have seen right now. First thing that we saw was about the angle of deviation. Once again, it is nothing but delta. That is the total angle of deviation is equal to delta one plus delta two, where delta one is this angle and delta two is this angle. So basically this angle. So if you uh, find out what is that, you would be able to find out what is the angle of deviation. That is the total angle of deviation. You can find that out. And once you do that, there are three factors that it depends on. One is the angle of incidence and the first surface. The second is the angle of prism and thirdly, the refractive index of the material itself and this refractive index of material depends on the wavelength of light so red light has the highest wavelength and hence deviates the least violet light has the least wavelength and hence deviates the most and yes that is pretty much as what we have seen so far so guys with that said let's get into something even more important i'll tell you something super, super important and then we'll start the quiz as well so just give me two minutes of your time guys that's all i need and then we'll get back into the quiz now we had asked you guys a poll asking you people what are the problems that you people are facing especially during this quarantine time because a lot has changed since then right firstly doubts because majority of your doubts are not getting cleared on time notes that has become a big issue because majority of your notes are not getting downloaded or you don't have the option to download the notes from where you're starting thirdly tests and assignments because i'm pretty sure that none of you guys want to go and give your exams directly you want to practice so where do you practice yourself where do you get those practice questions fourth competitive exams because your NTSC is right around the corner you want to practice you want to test yourself for that so how do you get yourself uh, you know uh, what is it how do you practice for that 
fifth choice of your own schedule because obviously you want the option to uh, you know study at a time that you are comfortable with and finally guys choice of your language because again you want to study in something that you're comfortable in not something that you're you know that you're forced down the throat now here's the thing guys these are all the problems but add with on to Trust me guys, we've solved all these problems. How do we solve all these problems? Inside the class, you will have the master teacher to help you clear your conceptual doubts. But together with that, you'll also have the class teacher to help you clear all your doubts as well. You can download all the notes and watch every recordings of every session. Not a problem at all. You can, you'll have regular tests and assignments as well. And based on these tests and assignments, you'll also be getting a detailed report card at the end of every month. You'll also have, you'll also be trained for competitive exams for free. You'll, you can also choose your own schedule that you feel comfortable in because live class are going 24 into 7. Whenever you feel like studying, you can choose that time and study and you can choose your own language because we are offering sessions in both English and Hindi. So whatever language you come, you're comfortable in, you can take that language up and study in that language. And apart from that, guys, you have unlimited live classes, all micro courses and crash courses, and a detailed performance report card and personalized attention as well. The link is given in the description below and it'll also be pinned in the comment section as well. All you have to do is click on that link. And also, guys, until the 15th of November, which is where this video is going to be out, until that day, you will be getting a flat 50% discount as a Diwali bonus. You'll be getting a, a, you know, exactly half the amount of what you're supposed to pay for all of the courses. So what you're going to do is click on the link in the description below. Once you click on the link, they'll ask you what grade do you belong to? 1 to 12th is the option that you have. Let's say you're in 10th grade. Once you click on that, they'll ask you which board do you belong to? CBC, ICC, or Marashka. Just click on the board that you, have, that you belong to. So it's a board and you have to click on get subscription. Everything that I just told you, everything would be written on this sheet your paper or this slide you can just pause it and read it if you want to once you're clicking at subscription this is what you're gonna get one month three month or six month let's say you want to go for the one month program the base price of one month program is basically four thousand rupees which i believe is a lot of money now remember guys for this four thousand rupees you're getting unlimited live classes test series and, and all the uh you know report cards and assignments as well now I know 4,000 is a lot of money but you get a primary discount on that and it comes down to 2,699 rupees on top of that, that is until the 15th of November, if you use this coupon code, if you use this coupon code AME Pro, you get additional 50% discount on that 2,699 rupees. When the price comes down to 1,349 rupees, you get a discount of 1,349 rupees. And what you'll be paying for the next one month is 1,349 rupees for the whole month. Let's say over for the three month program, for the three month program, the base price is uh, 10,000 rupees, but the price, uh, price comes down to 6,999. On top of that, if you use the coupon code AME Pro, you get an additional 50% discount, and the price comes down to 3,499 rupees, and you get a discount of 3,499 rupees. Again, guys, this is only valid till 15th of November, so make use of this opportunity. Let's say you want to go for the six month program, the base price is 16,000 rupees. Again, the base price comes down to 11,499. On top of that, if you use the coupon code AME Pro, you get additional 50% discount on that 11,499. So from 11,499, you get a discount of 5,749. And what you'll be paying is 5,749 rupees. No tax, nothing, everything, including everything. Uh, you'll be paying so much money, guys, for the next six months. Again, for that six months, you're basically paying less than 1,000 rupees for a month so do check out the link it's given in the description below and the coupon code is ame pro do not forget that as well to avail that 50 percent discount all right so with that said let's get some questions done and then let's see how many figures were able to solve it now again i would request all figures to put on the answers in the comment section below see if you can uh, solve the question even without my help that way you'll be able to you know practice these questions already. the first question is which of the following represents the refraction of light rays from a prism? A, B, C, or D. How do you think the rays of light would refract in a prism? What do you think is the right answer, guys? The answer to this question, without a doubt, should be option number D, guys. So that, you know, because it, you know, after refraction, it moves towards the base. And so that would be the right answer. Now, again, guys, I'm going a little too fast because I can't talk for too long. That is why I'm going a little too fast because uh, the more I talk, the more it hurts. So I'm really sorry if I'm going really fast. I'm really sorry about it. Next time I'll be, uh, hopefully I'll be back to normal. Anyways, next question. Angle of deviation is what? Angle between the incident ray and the prism. Angle between the in inclined sides of the prism. Angle between the incident ray and the emergent ray or none of these. And the answer people is definitely option number C. It is uh, the angle formed between the incident ray and the emergent ray. That is what is delta or the angle of deviation. Next question. 
which formula represents the total angle of deviation produced by the prism delta is equal to delta 1 plus delta 2 delta is equal to delta 1 minus delta 2 delta is equal to delta 1 into delta 2 or delta is equal to delta 1 divided by delta 2 you know the answer guys it's definitely going to be option number a delta is equal to delta 1 by delta plus delta 2 is how you find out the total angle of deviation next question name the subjective property of light related to its wavelength what is the one thing that is related to wavelength the speed frequency color or the refractive index the answer i'm pretty sure the majority figures would have gone with frequency because it's highlighted but the answer is is actually color color is the one because different colors have different wavelength and hence that would be the right answer but that's it guys here's your fifth question and the last question for today and then you also have a homework as well the question is the wavelength uh, range of white light is what what is the wavelength range of white light is it 4000 to 8000 nanometer is it 400 to 800 nanometer 40 to 80 nanometer or 4 to 8 nanometer and the answer it's 400 to 800 nanometer or 400 is the wavelength of uh, violet and 800 is the uh, you know the wavelength of red as well so that is it guys this is your homework for today let me know what is the answer in the comment section below the homework is how does the speed of light in glass change on increasing the wavelength of light how does the speed of light change uh, in glass if you were to increase the wavelength of light let me know what is the answer in the comment section below that is it from my side do not forget to like share and subscribe guys but before uh, we get into all of that you also know that your NTSC is right around the corner, people. So for your NTSC to make your life a little bit more easier, we have the we have two programs for you people and this course has started from 2nd of november it'll go until 30th of november so it means it has already started but it's never too late for you to join so what you will do is basically click on the link just copy this link and paste it people this link is going to take you to that website so the thing is this guys the price of that is 9999 rupees around 10000 rupees but you get a 90 percent discount on it so your ntc preparation for both your mock test and preparation would come down to 999 rupees if you're someone who just want to take the test and you're sure that you can prepare it by yourself then you can go with the ntc mock test version which is the link that is the second link that is given and do not forget the coupon code as well to avail that 90 percent discount and the price comes down to 99 rupees for all your test papers as well so that is it guys and these are all the teachers that will be teaching you again people do check out the link that is given that you can do pause the video and check out the link as well the link for the uh, courses are given in the comment section as well Click on it and get yourself the 50% discount that I just talked about. Thank you for joining. See you guys in the next one. Until the next time, I mean, this is Anup signing off for the night. Bye bye, people. Take care of yourself. Stay safe. Good day.